guys are on the board here in this first quarter. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. Dan Bailey now for the extra point. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So that drive, four plays, and it's capped off by the touchdown run coming from Dalvin Cook. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Here's Carr. He gets this one to Garcon. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Catch is made by Hunter Renfro. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Carl come up here with a first and ten, and he's a perfect six for six here to start the ball game. Carr going to give it to Jacobs, and this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Now Carr. And that's going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Carr now to throw. Able to find Waller. That's complete. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Second year in Oakland for Walner after being signed off the Ravens practice squad, but only six catches, 75 yards a season ago. Then he got a lot of hype in the offseason following OTAs. Their offensive coordinator is saying, you know, Darren, you have that position. Coach Gruden went as far as to say, Darren, you have the chance of a lifetime here. So now it's time for Darren Waller to go out there and prove it. On first down, 40, gain of three. The last run got three, now here's second and seven. To throw his car. Got an open man, it's Washington. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. Looking to throw on third and two. He'll find his tight end. That's Waller. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 23. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Carr now already over 100 yards passing in just this first quarter. It's first and 10. They run it with Jacobs, and he'll keep it moving down to the 15-yard line. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. On second down, Jacobs. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable, and you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say? Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. On third and two, Carr. And that is incomplete. And that's a crusher right there. Had his man open for a first down. Threw a fastball when that wasn't necessary. Incomplete pass. When are these quarterbacks going to learn? You don't get extra points for how hard you throw the football. 
On to try the field goal now, Phil Dawson. A 33-yarder from the left hash. Dawson's kick is up and through. And they take the lead here now at 10 to seven. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle, right? No big plays given up, no balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on, chestnuts? Huh, you like Come that on, one? what does that mean, break out the, just because you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why said that. I have no idea. And you see Dalvin Cook in the offense heading back out. And you see his numbers from a week ago. He was up over 100 yards then, and he's already hit pay dirt here once in this one. We always talk about quarterbacks and receivers getting into rhythm, right? Really feeling good, finding each other downfield. I think running backs operate the same way. They can hit a good rhythm and a good stride, and he's carrying it over from last week. That throw good for four. It's second down. Let's take a look here at the offense for Minnesota. If there's ever such a thing as a downside to a, such a nice drive, it's that we didn't get a chance to talk about them earlier. But I would have said, keep an eye on this offensive line and let's see how it performs. And so far, so great, because they've already gotten their running back into the end zone. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. Early down stuffs have put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. And the Raiders call on a nickel set for third down. Squeeze, squeeze, double, double. They'll look to throw here. And he's able to find Diggs. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. We'll check on his status when we get back. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Back to throw. That's to Cook out of the backfield. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. A look there at how the Raiders will start defensively coming into this one ranked number 19 in the NFL against the Pats. When they lack in pass defense, they do make up for in run defense. They're a top 10 unit against the people trying to move the ball on the ground. But this is a passing league, so there's a conundrum for them. How do they get better defending the pass? Here's a second and seven. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Ten yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. It's another ten yards on that one, and another first down. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. They run, Cook, five at the 36. Four yards, the pickup, first down. Back to throw now on first down. There goes a deep ball, end zone, and that is incomplete. Showed off the arm strength there, but to no avail, second down. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Second and 10. This one taken in by Olabisi Johnson. Second down pass play got him eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. 10-7 our score after one right here on EA Sports. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And Cook was fighting for it, but I don't think he got there. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball.
Dan Bailey now for the field goal try. From the right hash, it's a 46-yard attempt. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle, and that will knot us up at 10. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? This will be taken in at the one. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. A reminder, coming up later tonight, a lot of buzz about this game. The Browns, they've been doing some travel. Back-to-back primetime games for them. Monday night, they were in New York. Now the Browns head to Los Angeles to take on the NFC champs. Browns and Rams, an 8.20 kickoff Eastern time, 5.20 in California. On the ground, it's Jacobs to start the drive. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Yeah, that was the safety that came through and made the play, but there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker, and we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed. A big hit for a loss. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Jacobs now, and he'll get only a couple up to the 22. The Raiders on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and 11. Working from the gun. It's Carr. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. The football comes out. Jacobs lost it. And the Vikings pick up the football. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around, and we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. What we got? What we got? What we got? Now a run with Cook. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. On second down, Cook. But when you go from second and four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. And that'll be caught by Diggs for a Minnesota touchdown. Stephon Diggs, his fourth touchdown on the year as his guys are able to regain the lead. Little loft on that touchdown pass and sort of dropped it in the breadbasket perfectly. Right in the bucket. And when you're coming out of college and you're a rookie in the NFL, sometimes you forget about the different types of throws you have to make. You just rely on your fastball and throw it as hard as you can all the time. But in this situation, he understood and threw it in a spot where only his receiver was going to get it and no one else. That was pretty. Bailey got the extra point, and that makes it a 17-10 score. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This fielded at the two. And let's go. Now the Oakland offense heading back onto the field to take over. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go-around. A big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over. The other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. Give them 12 yards that time and an Oakland first down. Carr 
Carr with a play fake to Jacobs. That's complete to his tight end, Waller. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Now Carr on the bootleg. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 49-yard line. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. On second and seven, Carr. And now a fumble. The ball's out, and the Vikings pick up the football. And what a return as he brings this one all the way back to the 25-yard line. Whenever I see a team turn it over on back-to-back -back drives, fumbles on their last two, I know one person's blood pressure who is starting to rise, and that's the head coach. Absolutely. And when's it going to go down? When they stop fumbling? <laughs> <laughs> when they stop fumbling and after he's assessed the game film, and only if they manage to win the game. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in it. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Markel Lee. Came in there hard on the blitz and got him down nine yards behind the line of scrimmage. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest ones, maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. On the carry, it's Cook. Down to the 30 after a gain of three. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Looking to throw. It's caught by Treadwell. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. That little arc on it, he's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. Let's go, D. Big series right here. So we got to step it up. They go play action here on first down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Carl Joseph came roaring in on the safety blitz. Well, if you're going to throw the ball on first and goal from the two, the worst thing that should result is an incompletion for you offensively. But, Brandon, this is a different type of football. Back in my day, first and goal from the two, a lot of big people with big neck rolls, they were on the field trying to ram it into the end zone. They'll try again on second and goal after going backwards to the 12. A 10th carry in the game for Cook. Down to the six-yard line on a pickup of six as he gets halfway to the goal line. The Vikings on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. And that'll be caught by Diggs for a Minnesota touchdown. Stephon Diggs with his second touchdown of the game and fifth on the year. And the Vikings are going to widen that advantage. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron. Had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. Extra point up and good by Bailey. And so the drive there took six plays. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota.
Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Derek Carr and the Raiders set for their next possession. And how does he rally the troops, so to speak? He, he's played well, but they're down big on the scoreboard. How does he get his guys going? To make sure they understand it's not a me game, it's a team game. Everyone has to come together. Everyone has to up the level of play a little bit. And the pressure will get to him. He goes down. Now there is a flag on the play, but this looks like holding on the offense. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all, do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer counts? Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Harrison Smith on the safety blitz able to get the sack. Well, for last week's performance, which was so good, he was named NFC Defensive Player of the Week. He got a lot of praise, and understandably so, from national media. Looking pretty good on that play, too. And I love what he told us this week before the game. He talked about how much time they spend working on pass rush moves every position because anyone could go after the quarterback in their defense, and you can see how they've all absorbed their lessons. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. To throw, it's Carr. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And they'll get him down right around the 11-yard line. Well contained there defensively. The screen gets only a yard, and it's fourth. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. Only two punts for him last week in the loss as he gets this one away. Returnable for Sheryls. And that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. And you see Dalvin Cook in the offense heading back out. And no doubt he's come out of the gate strong. Only in week three, and you see the numbers thus far. And we always talk about identity, setting a tone, you know, getting, getting the groundwork laid for the season or, or for a game. It reminds me of when I first went to the University of Tennessee. And believe it or not, I was a quarterback for a day and a half. <laughs> and the first practice session, the first play we ran was 28 pitch, which is a toss sweep. And I remember the offense coordinator saying, that's our identity, that's our bread and butter, that's the basis of our offense. We got to get that down right here, right now. I think we're seeing some of that in this running game here. So did you not get that down, and that's why you were moved to the defense, or what? I, I don't know for that reason, but I do know I saw a couple of guys throw, and immediately they were saying, you know, you need to learn how to backpedal. Hey, you turned into a heck of a DB, though, partner. <laughs> First down, here's the run with Cook. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Second down, it's Cook looking for a seam but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage and that's it. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. They'll set up a throw and this is Cook with a grab. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Nine yards on the pick up there and it keeps the drive alive. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. Yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Now a play fake here on first down. Fighting a safety valve here. That's complete. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. They'll run with Madison, and they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Here we go, here we go, here we go. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. He completes it to Treadwell. And they've got it inside the 10 at the eight. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. 
A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business. And Thielen's got it. Touchdown, Vikings. Adam Thielen, his first touchdown of the new season. And the Vikings are going to widen that advantage. And remember, partner, that's a rookie quarterback back there. Apparently, he's getting the hang of this NFL thing pretty quickly. And three touchdown passes in particular. Well, they keep talking about making sure they're giving him plays that fit his talents and also maybe shrinking the playbook a little bit. They did tell us that. Bottom line, he's really good. Bailey now for the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it's polished off by a Viking score. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Tyrell Williams heading back out onto the field now. He's been good so far to this point in the second quarter. Need to get him even more involved, maybe? I would agree with that. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. it's not even a question for me. The way he's playing, he's doing a nice job. Increase things. More touches, more opportunities. Maybe that can reverse things on the scoreboard for them. They'll try to ratchet things up then maybe here in the second quarter. Here's Carr looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Jacobs. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. To throw again on second down. Carr got his man. That's Tyrell Williams. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now Carr, the open man here, Renfro. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Hey, watch that, watch that. Check Mike 54. Mike 54. All day. From midfield, here's Carr. He's going to find and complete it to Renfro. Now the Raiders going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Sacks a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Now the Raiders going to burn their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. From the, he's got a man open. It's Hunter Renfro. And he is down deep into Minnesota territory. A big play that time for the Raiders. 42 yards. Obviously, they're not where they want to be right now on the scoreboard. Big plays like that, though, that'll trend them in the right direction. Yeah, a few more like that, they'll be right back in the game. And if they can continue to do that, maybe they'll inspire their defense as well. They'll get a few stops. All right, Brandon, thanks. And welcome in, everybody, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Time for a look around the NFL here in week three of the new year. We'll get started up at Lincoln Financial Field in Philly. And it's the Lions who hold on to the lead in that one. Danny Amendola, a touchdown reception. From there, we move to Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City to see what's going on with the Chiefs. And they've got the lead in that one over the visiting Baltimore Ravens. Sammy Watkins, a touchdown reception. Finally, let's get up to the place they call Title Town, Green Bay, Wisconsin, to see what's happening with the Packers. And as you see, they are currently all tied with the visiting Denver Broncos. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back and forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. 
This is taken at his four. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Let's go, let's go. Here's Stephon Diggs as he and the rest of the offense get ready to go again. And his two touchdowns, a big reason they're winning right now. So meaningful when you score and it's got your team out there in front. Changes the complexion of everything you're doing. It's one thing to score them all in garbage time, doesn't it? But these count. This is a big deal, and he's making those types of plays. And I think they'll keep finding ways to get it to him. I was just going to say, probably going to go back to him. Credit him with a one yard gain there to make it second and nine. Another tote for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Cook. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time, forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. Now the Raiders call on a nickel set here for third down. Let's go, let's get this ball back for the offense, let's go. They'll look to throw here. Open man is Thielen, it's complete. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. Well, we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Shows some confidence, supreme confidence. Big time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did. This quarterback now still just the one in completion. 16 of 17. It's first down. He'll drop to throw. It's caught by Treadwell. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Call it no gain on the dump off, and it's third down. They'll set up to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Connor Barwin. In there to get him for a loss of nine yards, and that also leads to fourth down. To me, the defense was looking a little gassed near the end of the first half, but they come out of the locker room with a little extra spring in their step. Wonder what they did at halftime to get them so motivated. I don't know, but that sack looked good. Now let's see if they can build on the momentum of that play. Here's Britton Colquitt now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. So here comes the Raiders offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game, a chance for the offense though to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most of, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. The throw complete here to Williams. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him a first down, 15 yards that time for the Raiders. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage, so as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. 
They'll stay on the ground with Jacobs. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. They'll run on first down. It's Jacobs. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Now they'll throw with Carr. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. And he's going to get this inside the 30. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 27-yard line. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a 6-foot, six 6-inch six target. <laughs> it is indeed. The quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge 6-6 six six target that they've got in him. They really do, and it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. Here's Jacobs, and he loses the football a second time. And the Vikings pick up the football. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not even going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. So here are the Vikings to take, but good news for them right now. They've got the lead and the football. with three yards out of that, and it's second down. On second down now, it's Cook, and he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. They're going to look to throw, and he finds Cook. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Ten yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. As you know, so many things in the passing game are based on yardage. Sometimes it's just based on timing, and that's what we saw right there on that play. Third and three, just get the ball right to the receiver. This is the hitch route. And tell us, what is the hitch route? Yeah, just take really one step, like you're driving off the line of scrimmage, get the defensive back on his heels, get the ball out to the receiver, and he does the rest. On first down, Cook, and not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Second and nine now. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Adam Thielen. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Vikings are going to widen that advantage. So whatever happened to rookie quarterbacks taking time to adjust to life in the NFL? Because this guy looks like he's been doing it for about, what, seven years? Four touchdown passes? That's not something rookies are supposed to be doing with the ease in which he's doing it. Extra point try by Bailey. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. That time, 75-yard drive, five plays. And it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota. Bailey now. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. 
And now Oakland ready to take the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop, but that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. On second and 12, Carr, and that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Carr. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Now we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Matt Wild now as he'll punt it away for the second time. That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Now we get a peek at the captain of this offense heading back out there. He has been on his A game or in the third quarter. He's already in search of touchdown pass number five. He's played so well that it's hard for me to take my eyes off of him even when he's not on the field. I keep finding my eyes finding him on the bench in between series wondering what he's going to do next. This has been a blast to watch him play the position. Yeah, he's been spectacular with those four touchdown passes. When this offense gathers to watch the tape, they're going to like a lot of what they saw. They put up big numbers, but they might fast forward through that last play. Oh, there won't be any fast forwarding, partner. I've sat in those sessions before. You end up spending more time on the bad plays than you do on the good ones. It's just the nature of coaches. But I know sitting in that room, when you've had a big game, the night that they've had, you don't want to hear that. You just want to focus on the good stuff. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. Now back to throw. That's to Cook out of the backfield. And he's going to get this to the 31, but that is still well short of what he needed. They'll give him a yard on the play, and it'll be fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. Colk went on to kick as he sends it away. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And the Raiders will take over now first and 10. Derek Carr getting set and ready to go again on offense here. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent. Just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader. Making sure that you're playing well and not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you're judged. Mm -hmm. How big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far. They'll like that. I just want you to know that you agreeing with me, that's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. Are you touched? <laughs> He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. The loss of three on that first down pass play, now second and 13. Now a carry for Jacobs. And that closed up quickly there as he gets it up only to about the 17. One yard officially on the pickup, and it'll leave him with a third and 11. Throwing his car on third down. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Daniil Hunter picks up his second sack of the afternoon. It's been a tough one all game long for this offensive line. They're already down big. 
And now you know they're just going to come after the quarterback in a big way, don't you? Yeah, that old, they just can't get out of their own way right now. It's created an avalanche, and an avalanche is coming right on top of them. Here's Matt Weil now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. A big kick there. We'll call it 56. Here comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. Really solid effort for him right now. Third quarter, already four touchdown passes. How many can he get here? That remains to be seen, but I know one thing. You and I will be here to watch, and I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> With what he's doing in this contest, I'm not, I'm not missing a minute of it. This guy's been spectacular. Yeah, I mean, it's a team game, but sometimes these individual performances are fun to watch. Yeah, sometimes they just kind of come to the front, despite the fact, as you said, we know it's all about the team. But the way he's playing, he's trying to make his team win on his back. Yeah, it's been exciting. And having built that kind of a lead, they're able to do whatever they want right now. All momentum on their side, especially now running the football. Yeah, you're talking about a defense being on their toes. They don't know what's going to hit them <laughs> next at this point. No, they went from toes to heels, and they're trying to figure out how to get back to the toes part. First down, Cook. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. On second down, this is Madison. And he won't get much. Maybe a couple down inside the 35 to the 34. They'll try to get it on the ground with Madison. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. It'll be spotted on the right hash, a 52-yard attempt. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And this is good. It was running out of gas there at the end, but he winds up getting just enough on it. And they're sitting pretty now as the lead grows even further. Widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Raiders offense now making their way back out onto the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Now, the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Carr again here on second and ten. Renfro bringing it in over the middle. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. The second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. Now Carr firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Did you see that route the way that I did? I yep. thought he was trying to get deep. Yeah, that first. wasn't the first option. No, not the, it came off of that guy, the deep guy, and came underneath on the drag, completed it very well. What 
So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Now Carr again. It's caught by Garcon. The completion good for three, and it's second down. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Again, it's Carr. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. The Raiders on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and seven. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Another incompletion. You know, it's a wonder he's still moving around back there the number of times he's been sacked. Yeah, he's staying out there, isn't he? And you don't think about it much in a game like this, but he's showing incredible leadership. Still competing, still fighting, not taking himself out of a ball game that appears lost. They're already slim hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. The Raiders do snap it. It's Carr. He's going to air one out. And the Raiders try it on fourth down, but to no avail. And the Vikings, they have the football now in excellent field position. Well, that's another mistake there on the drop pass on fourth. And we've seen him do things like this all game. It's not hard to figure out why they're down by that deficit. They haven't made plays that are going to keep them in the game or win the game all game long. That's another example right there. It all boils down at the end of it to execution. Either you make the play or you don't. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. Been a very strong performance for them, really on both sides of the football. The turnover on downs, the most recent example, and now obviously they're in a great spot here. Yeah, if you're over on the bench right now, you're shaking hands with your teammate, you're hugging him, give him a little dap. Been a big, big performance for them. Now you just don't get careless. Take care of the ball on the way out. They run it again with Cook. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. A gain of just a yard, but it's a first down. They'll run on first down. It's Cook. Nevin Lawson there on the tackle. Going on the ground with Madison. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. The Vikings on third down. They've converted seven times and could use another right now. This is third and seven. Another carry now for Madison. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. Fourth down now after a loss of two. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. This from 44 yards away. And Bailey able to knock it through. And that will just add three more to a lead that's already out of hand. So he remains perfect, three for three, in the field goal department. And it's so important for any offense to have an ace like him up their sleeve, isn't it? Because now you know what his range is, and as soon as your offense gets there, you're pretty much counting on three points going up on the board. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. On that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. A good job by their defense, though. They held him to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down, when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily... The coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here, because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what you happened there. You think that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense, because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. Looking to throw again on second down. Carr, he's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll get this from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five. Carr going to try and throw on third down. 
And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. Well, it just seems like all game long, there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. Here's Matt Wild now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line, absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five, superb. Deep in their own territory, they look to throw. And this would hold in by Rudolph. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. On second down, it's Cook. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Brandon, that's clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Here we go, here we go. Ten, touch game. 55 to Mike. Here we go, here we go. Shift, shift. Again, it's Cook. And he'll get this one up to about his 14. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up a fourth down. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. This is fielded at the 27. Boy, well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. Now the Oakland offense heading back onto the field to take over. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. To throw, it's Carr. Now they go screen, it's complete. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Carr looking to throw on third and two. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Here's Matt Wild now as he's on to punt. 